North America has a lot of great sport fish to enjoy, and the Angling Edge staff loves to fish for any fish that swims. If you were to ask, what should we fish today? Our universal question would be, what's biting? Let's go for those. Looking at all different species, each has unique qualities that will ultimately help you become a better overall angler. For example, the bluegill has keen eyesight to feed on microscopic prey where line diameter can dramatically decrease the number of bites. Muskies are a top of the line predator that are usually in two moods, on or off. Smallmouth bass have a fascinating personality that frequently changes. Sometimes they're aggressive enough to hit a large musky bait, while at other times, the only way to catch one is to reel a small hair jig painfully slow. One of our fan favorites in the target species of the day, white bass. White bass are aggressive species that are often easy to find and fun to catch when they congregate in spring. They tend to be in large packs, so when you find one, there's likely to be more in close proximity. Let's join James Linder and Jeremy Smith hunting South Dakota white bass. Yeah, I know everybody loves crappies and I do too, but I gotta tell you my favorite panfish in the spring, hands down, white bass. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the number one tool to find fish in the spring is a thermometer. That said, there are technologies that can help you find fish more quickly. Now this is a big flat, it's warm in here, but it's a big area of warm water and when the conditions are right, you'll be able to find fish on these shallow flats with side imaging. So actually we're going through a nice uh, area right now and it is loaded with white bass. So I can't really see these fish because they're spooking with my 2D sonar or my down imaging, but with the soft bottom here, I'm able to isolate areas that have those packs of white bass in them. Hopefully we'll find some areas too that might have walleye and other fish, but we're seeing lots of little grains of rice up on this flat and side imaging is hands down the best tool that I know to find fish on these shallow flats. One right there. Oh my gosh, here's a big, here's what we're casting to guys. Look at this, look at all of these white bass. Look at that. Zoom in on that, zoom in on them, Tug. Zoom in on them, yeah. Look at that, those are all white bass right there. It's exactly what we're looking for. In a big flat like this, it's really helpful to have a tool like this. Look at more of them. Ah. Oh, yeah. Look, look at that, I mean, it's one, two, three. You can tell when you reel it in, you're getting so many of them, but I mean, there are just tons and tons of them here. It's sort of interesting on how that side how imagery, even in shallow water, how well you can see the fish and get the right bottom composition. It's amazing on how they stick out like a sore thumb. Yep, another little pack right there. And I think I'm gonna take the barbs off of this bait right now because when you start getting into fish like this, it's easier on you, it's easier on the fish. If you do happen to get hooked by one of these maniacs, it's not gonna be nearly as big a deal. All right, off you go. I'm guessing Jimmy's gonna get one here any second. Spring is always an interesting time of the year to find and catch fish. That being said, prevailing weather, that being warm and stable, or reoccurring cold fronts tend to pull fish in or push fish out. Looking at any good lake map, there's a couple of really key areas that you should be looking for in early spring. Number one, the largest shallow flats on the lake are always a good drawing card. Shallow flats or shallow dark bottom bays tend to warm faster. Most of the time, these areas are a distance away from deep water basins of the lake that tend to warm much slower. Today we're hunting for white bass, but the same logic applies to walleyes, bass, and panfish. Another key area to look for are any incoming water sources. That could be a river, creek, or even culverts that are draining into the lake. The key here again, warm water. Last but not least, pay attention to wind direction. Prevailing wind can pile up warm water in an area or cool it down if it was coming from a deep water section of the lake. The surface temperature gauge on your depth finder is a big deal at this time of the year. In the simplest terms, fish are gathering in the warmest water they can find and believe it or not, 
two or three degrees can make a difference. Boy, when you find one, there's many. Pip squeak. That's all right. Yep. After a long winter, I like catch, catching them. That guy there. There we go. Beautiful Double. fish, though. You got another one, Jerry? Oh, yeah. This is my, I just love spring fishing. I just think it's one of the best times of the year. And it's that time of year, whoa, when of course the wind blows, but also fish love biting, moving baits. And we're right on the bubble right now. The water's got to about 45 degrees. And that's right about when you can start pitching and winding. Shad wraps are a great choice. Jigs and paddle tails are a great choice. Swimming here jigs. Ooh, you got a biggie getting... on there, Jer. I got Oop, kind of. I got another one. Oh, Jer, got... here, go yep. around me. Here. Yep, sorry. Oop. I'm sorry. No, that's not your fault. That's on me. Oh, I got it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I got a, a bunch of them busting out of the yeah, right. water for the other one. Here we go. All right, I'll get this one. Ooh, he's kind of hooked funny. This, is a, this guy's a real boy. Look at that one. Beautiful fish. fish. Look at that thing. Gorgeous. Look at that thing. That is you one. definitely got me, but that's a good pair of fish right there. No boom, 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 boom. We're getting them. Talk about it. action. It is great. And that is a great search tool. Right now, the fish are on this flat. I mean, you can see to the shore over there, it's all the same depth. And we just got to cover water to contact them. And I think we got a little program. We'll see if we can get another one. Cool thing about a shad wrap, actually, it's a, the way you can fish the bait. You know, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, ways you can actually, what I'm talking about is retrieve the bait based on the species of fish you're fishing for. Let me give you some examples of some different retrieves that you fish with this bait. And it's sort of interesting to me, actually, and a lot of times you get how you can actually determine uh, what fish will bite it, believe it or not, which is really intriguing. Right now we're fishing for whiteies and we're fishing it, so I'm fishing it, where I pitch the bait out, I'm gonna reel it down, but I'm gonna fish it like this, sort of a snap, quick snap and go. You know, or I'm imparting a tremendous amount of uh, action into the bait, it's jumping back and forth, it's vibrating with, you know, quick intermittent pauses. For walleyes, what I do is reel it down to depth and then I pump and reel up the line up and reel up the line and the bait is just going pause pause and it's a great uh, retrieve option with these baits for walleyes now i'm fishing for smallmouth bass in really cold water and i would actually we have like a lead drop a rock spot or a specific location where i think the fish are positioned and what i'm going to do is cast the bait out reel it down to depth, pause it, and then a lot of times I'll actually hesitate where you're actually suspending the bait for a period of time, actually letting it sit in a fixed position or it's slowly floating up. And it's amazing in this really cold water how something like the speed of your retrieve and how you're retrieving the bait can determine how many fish you catch. I've seen it before out here, where I was out here with Al before, and you'd reel it one way and you wouldn't catch any. And as soon as you slowed that bait down and you paused it and hit, let it drift up a little bit, you'll just start pounding the fish just based on retrieve. Can't beat that when you can get fish this size, who doesn't love it? And I'm guessing at the end of this trip, we'll have caught these, some smallmouth, some walleye. And that combo, smallmouth, walleye, and white bass is one of my favorite spring combos of all time. I'm gonna get this guy back and get the hook out here. I'm gonna show you these color that I'm throwing right now. Here we go. You can see we're playing with color out here. Right now the water that we're in is fairly clear, but we end up fishing a lot of different mud lines and these really vibrant colors like this. I've had good luck with all three species. Of course, smallmouth love bright colors. The white bass seem to like them and walleyes love pink and chartreuse, but Rapla's got a whole line of these cool new custom color shad wraps. And I mean, they're just beautiful patterns. Fleet Farm has them if you want to pick some up, but look at that. Isn't that just a dynamite looking smallmouth, white bass, walleye color? They seem to be liking it. Oop, there you go. Oh, oh doubles. <laughs> doubles. <laughs> Ice out action. They just smash it, man. They just totally smash it. Wow. 
Boy, the average size of these, these are really nice size white whiteies. Boy, I tell you that much. Go back for you. Come here, buddy. There you go. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. I mean, actually, I was getting tired <laughs> of get... actually catching fish through holes in the ice. Yeah, they're kind of on the bubble. If you should really be flipping them or not. Aren't yeah, they? these guys are. There's a couple Boy, of them. That is a really, really nice, nice white bass there. Those hooks just stick them. That's the those hooks are just so sharp and deadly. Wow. Get the wind going. You get the white bass going. Get this guy back, and I'm guessing my next cast, I'll catch another one. Boy, look at that thing. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Boy, they're beautiful fish. Yeah. Let's let him go, Jimmy. Want to get I don't a shot think of him? Let much him go. better of a fish to catch than a white bass. They got the really the right attitude. They're such an aggressive fish. And the other thing, they move in big uh, packs. You know, they're really, really a, a school fish. When you find one white bass, generally. They, they're around their buddies, wherever they they're There's at, whether they're deep, shallow, or in between. Right now we're fishing in spring and we're fishing these big shallow bays and the water temperature is just starting to warm up. And a lot of different fish are, uh, are pushing into these bays, but we'll catch some walleyes, we'll catch some smallmouths, we'll catch walleyes. Right now, oh, guess what I got? You get a crappie? A largemouth. <laughs> yeah. Everything eats a shad wrap. Oh, <laughs> you know what technology makes this whole experience so much more fun. You know, it wasn't that long ago we'd be out here with, you know, we've, we've always fished with cable drives for the most part. So we didn't have a spot lock feature, which is obviously revolutionary to be able to hold in one place. So somebody have to be on the trolling motor. You want to unhook it. Hey, Jimmy, get up to the bow. You're hold the trolling motor. I hook mine and then he's got one and you're off to school in no time. But now we've got two options for the shallow water deal. We've got the Talon shallow water anchor in the back. Oh, perfect, that worked out good. You have to unhook them. And then we've got the spot lock feature here. Now it's really windy today. I'm not concerned that I'm gonna burn up my, my trolling motor battery, but right now, just the way things laid out, we're only in seven feet. I've got a 10 foot Talon. We can just lock into place and make casts all over in here. Now, if the fish are out a little deeper, the boat's just facing the opposite way and I, I spot lock, it's in position. There's a school of fish that it's every cast. How cool is that? That you never have to worry about boat control. We can move around the boat, we can have a, we can do whatever we want and we're not concerned about boat control. So it's really big having the option of a shallow water anchor and having a spot lock feature on your trolling motor. It's just huge. You may ask yourself, what? What are those two guys, oh, I just lost mine. What are those two guys doing with those, oh, I just missed them again, with those crazy looking orange, oh, there's another one, orange rods. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got them that time. And they're actually fiberglass rods, believe it or not. And why would you have fiberglass? Well, you could see just right there, I was getting a little excited, and I missed three fish on, on that retrieve, and fiberglass does a, a number of things for you. Ugh. First of all, it's indestructible. I can lift fish like this in the boat. But most importantly, let me get this guy back. In my opinion, when you're fishing light balsa baits like this, it gives you the ability to throw baits far. So Jimmy and I are both fishing with St. Croix's Legend Glass. This is a 7.2 medium power, moderate action. And what it does is the rod will flex when you throw the bait. And it's really a, a big deal because not only does it give you that you know, propulsion to throw it forward, but it also prevents the bait from tumbling. If you're fishing with a stiffer graphite rod and you go to whip these light balsa baits and wind like this, a lot of times the bait will tumble and it will foul. So we have almost zero problems with fouling using a rod like this. And the other big deal is you can see those white bass on these fine hooks really tear you a new one. Look at that moderate action. See how far it flexes down the blank? You can hold on to lightly skin hook fish really, really well. So. Overall, I mean, this is an amazing tool. It's not something that you're using every day, but if you're a balsa guy, you like throwing little crankbaits like shad wraps, this rod is absolutely amazing for that. Now, the reel I'm using for this application, you might look at it and say, boy, that seems like kind of a smaller reel for the size of fish you're catching, but I'm fishing with a 1,000 size reel. This happens to be a Daiwa Ballistic. This is a really nice setup because it's 
one of those things that I just love doing. So I've got something that is super nice, but I have the 1000 for the simple reason is that I get pretty amped up when I'm out here doing this style of fishing. And when I'm fishing crankbaits, for example, with bait casting gear, I'm always running a, a you know, lower gear ratio reel, something like a 6.3 to one. Now, if I put a 2,500 or a 3,000 size on here, what I'm doing is basically speeding up the line retrieve of the reel. So I purposefully put a smaller reel on this rod and that helps me fish the bait a lot slower. The other thing that I find with it is that smaller reel with this particular line I've got on here, the arbor size really matches the stripper guide well. And believe it or not, I can throw the bait extremely far because there's not a lot of line slap on the guide. So I personally like fishing the smaller reel for this application simply because it slows me down. Oh, 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 so much fun, so much fun. You know, line really does make the system complete with the rod and reel. And I've got a pretty unique line on here. This is Suffix Nano Braid. It's been my favorite line for pan fishing. And the reason I love it for pan fishing is because I can throw little baits a long distance. And the same application is really true with balsa. They might weigh more than a panfish jig, but you know they've got a lot of resistance in the air. So the whole idea is I want a line that makes it easy to throw lighter baits with this system. You can still see it's quite, quite tough. So I'm fishing with six pound suffix nano braid on this particular spool as my main line. It's super thin. It cuts the water really well. This line doesn't have tremendous shock strength. So if you were like snap jigging, it's not necessarily the best choice for that. But when you're pulling stuff, you can hardly break this line. If you were hooked up to a tree, it's really hard to break it. It's got tremendous pulling strength and that thin diameter gets baits down really quickly. And for this number seven shad wrap that I've got on here, I'm actually fishing with 10 pound suffix Invisalign as a leader material here. And 10 pound, a lot of guys might say, geez, that's a little heavy. But you know what, we're going, these are pretty decent sized fish. We're not dealing with great water clarity. So the 10 pounds kind of nice when you're banging on rocks. It just gives you a little more confidence that you're not gonna break off. And it doesn't seem like it really matters to the fish anyway, based on our results. Well, it looks like a real big one, Jim. It is. Wow. Rod fish. Yeah. Let's come here, buddies. Oh, look at that guy there. Beautiful, oh, beautiful geez. fish. Look at that darn thing. Look at this. Oh, gosh. I mean, this is just, Jimmy, this is unbelievable. Man, those are nice ones. Those are really nice white bass. I knew they get a lot bigger than this, but these are nice. Look at that thing. Wait, look how broad that thing is. Come here, buddy. Look at that thing. Boy, I think it's gorgeous animals. Yeah, I know everybody loves crappies and I do too, but I gotta tell you my favorite panfish in the spring, hands down, white bass. Okay, here's the deal. I want you to imagine yourself coming off of a magnificent weekend with family and friends. You were probably out fishing and had a memorable bite to go along with it. You're getting ready Monday morning to go to your office, to go to work. You got the whole week planned out. Everything's been great. You're ready. You're going to do this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to get all of this stuff done. You walk through the door and everything comes in. One thing from the left, the right, the up, down, and in there. Calls, things you have to respond to. By the end of the day, your head is spinning. Yeah, 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 you know, you're usually reacting to something somebody else did or worse yet somebody else didn't do that impacts you and you have to deal with it. You're up in the middle of the night, you're going, two o'clock in the morning I wake up, Lord, how am I gonna get all of this stuff done? It's mind boggling. It's more than I can handle. I've had a few of those days in my life, a few too many. How about you? Can you relate to some of those situations? I'm sure most of you can. I'll share with you a little bit of how I learned to cope with the, what we call the pop-ups of life. My friend Tom and I call them the pop-ups 
of life. Things you never even planned on for the day and all of a sudden they hit you like a ton of bricks. First of all, I, I learned to de depend on the Word. I go to the Word for everything I have, every situation, challenge in life, the uh, Word of God in the Bible. And I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, guided by His Holy Spirit. And then there is another scripture that I've been depending on a lot since COVID came on the scene. Seems like I need it more than normal. It's Matthew 6.34. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. That became really real to me, and it has had a mega impact on how I deal with the pop-ups of life. Hopefully this will help you get through this week on challenges that are unexpected, that just come in out of nowhere. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water.